Erin McDougall about the 10 month long relationship she says she had with Donald Trump. A relationship she says that began in the summer of 2006. McDougall is suing to void an agreement she signed shortly before the 2016 election with the company that owns the National Enquirer, which bought the rights to her story. Her lawsuit says the magazine bought her story, in fact, to kill it, thereby protecting the candidacy of Donald Trump. It's a story that's not been told in full on camera until tonight. And as you know, Carrie McDougall is just one of three women speaking out just this week about the Donald Trump they say they knew. If we could just start at the beginning, how did you meet Donald Trump? I met Donald when they were filming the Celebrity Apprentice at the Playboy Mansion. They were filming there and I was hired as one of the playmates to work at the pool party scene. It was quite fun actually. And uh, you, you'd, been, you'd work for Playboy for some time? Yes. I, after becoming Playmate of the Year, I was uh, required to work so many events with Playboy. And that was one of the events that I thought would be fun, and I worked it. And there were a lot of women there, and we just all had a great time, and that's where we met. How did you actually meet? You know, he said hello, like he would to anybody. And then throughout the night, it was kind of obvious that there was an attraction from his part to me. And I kind of just blew it off. Um, you could see him looking at you? Oh, I could see it. And the Playboy bunny she's like the house mom is what we call her she actually made a comment like wow this guy's really into you and that's kind of when i started like paying attention and he, and he was and i i kind of smiled at it thought it was kind of cute and funny and then at the end of the night you know after striking up many conversations uh we we exchanged phone, uh, he actually asked me to write his phone my phone number down for for him to keith did you did you, you wanted to see him again I thought it would be nice to communicate with him and talk to him. I actually at that point didn't consider uh, dating or going out with him, but I did think he's an interesting person, he's brilliant, and I like smart minds, and I think that I was interested in a communication for sure. So when was the next communication? I believe we talked right away on the phone, and I think we talked for about a week on the phone before his next visit to L.A., and that was his birthday, which I think is June 12th. Would he, would he call you? He would call me, I would call him, vice versa. So you had his phone number? I have many of his phone numbers, yes. Do you have his a direct number for him or did you have to go through somebody else? I have his direct phone number. I have quite a few of the direct phone numbers. I also had his uh, bodyguard case phone number. I had his personal secretary's phone number. That's uh, Ronda? Ron uh, no, at the time it was Twee. I don't know her last name, but mm -hmm. I just know her by Twee. But I have all these phone numbers, so if I couldn't reach him on one, depending on where he's going to be, I would call the other. When he called, did his number show up on the phone? No, it did not. It would show up as what? Gosh, it's been so long, but I think it just showed up as a 212. That's mm -hmm. it, just 212. But like a block number or a correct. no caller ID? Right, correct. And, and what were the conversations like? The conversations were like any other conversation you have with a, like a nice person. We got along great. We had respect for each other. We had fun. We were funny together. We had a good time. Um, we would talk about anything and everything from what kind of food do you like to how's your family, he asked me how my family was, to politics, to anything, like just normal everyday life conversations. When did you actually decide to see him again? Before, you mean after the June 12th? Uh, yeah, after the, after the initial meeting okay. and after the, the phone con conversations. After our first meeting on June 12th, I decided to see him again. Um, actually, that night I didn't think I was going to see him again because I was a little bit put off. But wait, I'm sorry. Was the June 12th was that the the the, part, the apprentice event? No, that was our first quote unquote date. Okay, so yeah. I'm sorry. So tell me about your first date. Our first date, I was told we were going to go to the Beverly Hills Hotel for dinner. So he had told me that Keith, his bodyguard, was going to pick me up at a certain time, and he did. And then we were driving over to the Beverly Hills Hotel, and Keith drove around to the back, and he said, we have to get out here because we don't want to walk through the hotel. And at that minute, I'm like thinking to myself, are we going to a room? Because I thought we were having dinner at the Beverly Hills Hotel. In the actual restaurant. Right. Well, we did have dinner at the Beverly Hills Hotel, but in his bungalow instead. Uh, we had dinner there for a few hours. Uh, we talked for a few hours. We had a great time. We were getting to know each other. Um, we we're talking about his birthday, and then, as as the night ended, we we were intimate. When you got to the Beverly Hills Hotel, and, and Keith said, "We're not going to go through the lobby. We're going to go 
Was it to a to a, a room at the Beverly Hills Hotel or a, a, a suite or? It was a bungalow in back. A bungalow. Uh, it's the one he said he always stayed at. And in fact, every time that I met him there, it was the same exact bungalow. And uh, he, he's called it the nicest bungalow they had. So I guess that's why he chose that one. But um, that's, yeah, that's where we went every time. Were you concerned when you realized you're not going to go out to dinner, you're actually going to be eating in the bungalow? I think that first night I was concerned because I didn't, I wasn't expecting to go to a hotel room or a bungalow, whatever you want to call it. I actually thought we were going to dinner, so I was a bit concerned. And I think at that moment is when I realized maybe something else is going on. You know, I'm a smart girl. I, I probably could have figured it out, but I really wasn't thinking. I think I was so nervous to actually meet with him in general that it kind of just didn't even, you know, think. It wasn't in my thought process at that moment. I was just too nervous to actually meet him, so. Were you attracted to him? I was attracted to him, yeah. He's, he's a nice looking man and, you know, I liked his charisma. I think I love, you know, Good, great posture. He's got great posture, and he was nice. So the, the sex was consensual. It just was to be consensual. Clear. Yes. And what happened afterward? After that night. You, you said it. You sort of ended on a, a strange note. So, <clears throat> what what happened after you had been intimate? Well, after we had been intimate, he he tried to pay me, and I actually didn't know how to take that. Did he actually try to hand you money? He did. He did, and I said, I mean, I just had this look of, I don't know, just, I don't even know how to describe it. The look in my face must have been so sad because I had never been offered money like that before, number one. But number two, I thought, does he think that I'm in this for money or why I'm here tonight? Or is this a normal thing? I didn't know, but I looked at him and I said, that's not me. I'm not that kind of girl. And he said, oh, and he said, you're really special. And I was like, Thank you. So I left. I actually got into the car uh, for Keith to take me home, and I started crying. I was really sad, mm -hmm. and it really hurt me, but I went back. Hurt you that he saw you in that way? Yes. It hurt me that he saw me in that light, and he obviously assumed that that's the kind of girl I was. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I was a playmate. I don't know, but... Even though you'd had a night of conversation and days of conversation, it hurt you that it boiled down in the end to that? It did hurt me. It did hurt me. I was crying in the back seat of the car. Like I said, I got home and into my apartment and I, I, I cried for a lot. I felt really terrible about myself, let alone what he felt, but I felt terrible about myself. And, you know, I got over it, but it did, did hurt. Did you think you would see him again? I didn't. I didn't think I'd see him again, but then when he called, you know, I was at a bad place in life. I just came out of a bad relationship where I never felt good enough in my relationship. And not that that's any excuse, it's not. But I think I was so down on myself that when he called, and he's so sweet, like what everyone sees on TV, I didn't see in that man because mm -hmm. that man was very sweet, very respectful, very loving, very kind and caring. Like that's the man I saw. He, he's very, he can be very charming in person. He's very charming. He's very sweet. His personality to me was, wow, like I loved it. It was great. When, did, when was the next time you saw him? Um, you know, I'd have to look back at my, my I took a journal back in the day, um, and not just for anything in particular, but I, to this day, I still write down everything I do during the day. That's what I do. So if I looked at that, I could find out, but I think it was in that same couple of days within a week because he was in town. When he came to LA, he was usually there between three, six, seven, between three, five, six, seven days. And you, I usually saw him. You gave us the, the journal that you kept. You would write down on days you saw him, you, would, you, do, you wouldn't write out his full name. No, I either call them T or DT because if anyone found this, I wouldn't want to expose myself or expose him. So there's a number of, of days here, uh, looks like dozens over the course of time, with a small little DT. And sometimes they're hard to see. I purposely kind of chicken scratched a lot on there because I know what I'm writing. And like I said, to this day, I still do that with my notes and where, I've, where I'm at, who I talk to, whatever. Um, I did, I did write that down. So did I see him quite a few times, quite a bit? Absolutely. We spent a lot of time together. And did you tell friends about it at the time? I did. I told a few friends. Uh, I told my sister. I actually told my mother that I knew him and we talked on a regular basis, but I told her that we were just friends and she kind of scolded me a little bit like, I hope it's only friends because you know he's married. And I'm like, yes, I understand. 
Um, my sister actually heard him on the phone. She was with me one time and she, you know, I couldn't hold the phone because I was busy, so she put him on speaker and we were just talking. I mean, I didn't care. It's like she knew anyway. So when you have a relationship with somebody, you don't hide it, right? If there's feelings, you don't hide that relationship. Did he ever ask you to hide it? No, he didn't. Never. So, so there was never no. a conversation of don't never. tell Never. In fact, I think once he asked, um, does your sister know? And I said, yeah, she knows. He's like, aw. So he, he wasn't afraid to hide it at all. And you knew he was married. I did. Did he bring up his wife? Did you bring it up? No, I, I never brought up his wife. He did once, and that's the only time I can remember when he said she was an intelligent woman. She knew, like, I don't know, four or five languages. But other than that, he never talked about his wife, and I never brought her up. I, obviously, there's a reason I don't bring her up, because I felt guilty about it. So I, after never seeing her until the one occasion, I never correlated the two, really. I just kind of out of sight, out of mind. When you met, it was 2006. Correct. Was this shortly after uh, his son had been born? Yeah, it was. Would he, would he talk about his child, his son? No. The only thing he said about his son was, um, isn't the name Baron a nice name? And I said, yeah, it is. And I said, how did you choose that name? And he told me, and that's it. There's no conversation. As you enter a relationship, obviously in any relationship, you start to think about where this is going to go and how you feel. And how did you view it? How did you view the relationship? You know, going through it, when I look back, where I was back then, I know it's wrong. Like, I'm really sorry for that. I, I know it's a wrong thing to do. But back in those days, sorry. It's okay. Back in that day, I was, I was a different girl. I, you know, I had fun. I was in the Playboy scene. Um, I was just enjoying life as much as I could. And, you know, when I got with him, I actually, you know, there was, a, there was a real relationship there. There, was real, there were real feelings between the two of us, not just myself, not just him. There was a real relationship there. And I kind of out of sight, out of mind with everything else. And, you know, in, deep inside, I did have a lot of guilt. But I, I still continued. You believe, though, that he had real feelings for you? Of course he did. Mm -hmm. I know he did. He would say that. He did. Were you in love with him? I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think he was in love with you? He was, yeah. Did Donald Trump ever say to you that he loved you? All the time. He always told me he loved me. Yeah, of course. Did he have any nicknames for you? <laughs> he would call me Baby, or he'd call me Beautiful Karen. Would you always see him just in Los Angeles? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, I actually went to a golf tournament with him in uh, Lake Tahoe. I went to his golf course in, in California. I went to his, his golf course home in New Jersey. I went to his home in New York. And I'm trying to think where else. Um, I, I can't recall right now, yeah. When you say you would arrange to, to go someplace, how would it be arranged? I would pay for the flight. I would book it myself. I would book the hotel room if I wasn't staying with him. Usually I stayed with him, but there's been a couple times where I didn't. And then he would reimburse me. So if, I, if the flight was, I don't know, let's just throw out a number. If the flight was $500, he'd give me $500 and say, here's, you know, take care of the, the flight and things like that. So Why would he have you book all the, the travel and, and the hotel rooms? Well, there's no paper trail. And is it, did you realize that at the time? Yes, I did. Mm. Because he was concerned about it being revealed at some point and there being a paper trail. All I was told is there's no paper trail. Paper trail. I can't say what his reasons were, but I, I would assume that's the case. Yes, yes. And Keith Schiller was he very much involved in this, picking you up, sending messages back and forth, things like that. I did have a lot of correspondences with Keith. Um, 
Yes, and I got to know Keith pretty well. Like Keith would always pick me up, drop me off, take me to and from, whether it's an event, whether it's the Beverly Hills Hotel or wherever we're going. Um, Keith was always involved. Keith, Keith is a nice man. Yeah, I got to know him. He's funny. You went to the. You said you went to a uh, a golf tournament in Tahoe. I did. There are other uh, women now who have come forward saying that they uh, also uh, had met with him uh, and had sex with him uh, at, at that event. Were you aware of any other women? No, I was not. I mean, I was with them a lot, so I didn't see anything, but could he have stayed a day longer than me? Sure. Did you think that this relationship was going to last for a long time? Did you have it? I did. You did? Yeah. I, I felt it was getting much stronger. Um, you know, there were no gifts ever but a Christmas gift. Um, I got him a gift and then he told me the gift he got me was an apartment in New York but it's being remodeled right now and I never saw the apartment because I ended up breaking up or ending the relationship but uh, that was supposedly my gift. I don't know. You went to his actual apartment in Trump Tower? I did. I didn't know I was going there. Um, I actually had a hotel room in the city at that time, well, for this trip. What was it like going to Trump Tower? I didn't know I was at Trump Tower. We went into the back entrance, so I had no idea where we were actually going. The back entrance, as you know, probably is more discreet. It's like a little nothing hallway versus like when you walk into the Grand, right? right? So we went to the back entrance, and then at that time I realized where we are going, and I said, aren't you afraid to bring me here? And he's like, they won't say anything. And I'm like, okay. So we went upstairs, and we looked around, and... To his office or to his apartment? His apartment. Mm -hmm. He showed me around. Um, what did you think of the apartment? It's very gold. <laughs> no, actually, it's actually quite pretty. The views are amazing. It's a beautiful apartment. Uh, they have great taste. And he showed you around the apartment? He did. Did he reference Melania at that point? Before the break, you heard former Playboy model Karen McDougal describe how she says she and Donald Trump met, the sweetness she says she saw in him, and her reaction to what she says was an offer of money after their first intimate encounter. Before we go any further, we should note that then White House Communications uh, Director Hope Hicks called Ms. McDougal's allegations of an affair, quote, totally untrue. But Ms. McDougal stands by her story, as you see, and as we continue to talk today, she told me about her account of another emotionally jarring aspect of any affair with a married man, meeting his wife and his family. Here's part two of our exclusive conversation. What did he say? Did he reference Melania at that point? He did. We passed a room, and he said, this is Melania's room. She likes to have her alone time or to get a way to read or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's when I kind of thought maybe, maybe they're having issues. I didn't ask. It's not my business at that point. How did you feel being in his apartment? Guilty. Very guilty. guilty. Mm -hmm. Why guilty? I kind of didn't, I couldn't wait to get out of the apartment actually. I think doing something, but then when you're doing something, well doing something wrong is bad enough, but when you're doing something wrong and you're in the middle of somebody else's home or bed or whatever, that just puts a little stab in your heart, and I, I just couldn't wait to get out of the apartment. I wanted to go back to my hotel room. It, it made his other life more real. It, I was just going to say, it made it more real to me. Yes, made it more real. Did you see Baron there? No, I never saw Baron. So wh where's this picture from? That picture is from the Apprentice release party that they had at the Playboy Mansion. So they filmed it. Uh, like a month beforehand, which is where I met him, and then they had the release party when The Apprentice actually aired. So that's when that one was. So th this is a picture with Ivanka Trump, Melania Trump, um, several of your colleagues, and, and yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. D did um, so? Was that the first time you met Melania? It is. And honestly, if you can tell, I tried to keep my distance. I I tried to go as far away as I could, just because. I felt guilty. Do you think she knew? You know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, you know, it was told to me that they were arguing that night, and I said, why? And somebody had said, probably because of you. But I don't know if that's a fact or not, so don't quote me on that one. 
the, there, there's another picture with, um, I think it's you with, with Eric Trump. Mm -hmm. Do you know where that, where that is from? I believe that's from the Trump vodka release party that he had, which was within a couple of days of that other party. Did, did it feel strange to meet his son, Eric? It did, but he was such a friendly guy. Like, again, when you're doing something wrong, you try and push everything out of the way and make it as right as you can in your mind. So I met, you know, all his kids, except for Baron, of course, and I just tried to shake it. But now it gets to me, but then it didn't. Did he ever compare you to any of his kids? You know, he, he's very proud of um, Ivanka, as he should be. I mean, she's a brilliant woman. She's beautiful. She's, you know, that's his daughter, and he should be proud of her. Um, he said I was beautiful like her, and, you know, you're a smart girl. And there wasn't a lot of comparing, but there was some, yeah. I heard a lot about her. <laughs> yeah. Did that strike you as odd in any way, or...? You know, I know a lot of people think it's odd. I, you know, there has been some comments I've heard in the news he said about her, and I think those comments are wrong, but do I think it's strange that a father would love his daughter so much that he brags about her? No, I brag about my dog that much. I guess, you know, some people seeing this are not going to believe that you had a relationship. Uh, Hope Hicks has said categorically you did not have a relationship. Mm -hmm. There's no truth to this. When you heard that denial, what did you think? Well, I think somebody's lying, and I can tell you it's not me. Um, it's a little hurtful, but at the same time, I have to understand, like, if he were to have told Hips, uh, Hope that he didn't do it, I guess I understand because he's trying to protect his family, his image, things like that. But it was definitely a little like, wow, you're going to lie about that? But okay. When you've heard the stories of you know, Stormy Daniels, who uh, has come forward, who said that she was at the Tahoe uh, Club as well, uh, and, and others who said that they were there. You didn't know about that, that at the time? No, I did not know. Does it, when, what did you think when you heard that? <clears throat> My first thought was, how could she have been with him when I was with him? The only time we weren't together on that particular trip was when I, well, he was on the golf course golfing. I didn't go, clearly. But I went to every event, every after thing, parties, daytime things. I was there. That's why I can't understand. Now, I do remember him saying, he came in one day and said, oh, there were a bunch of porn stars out there. They were wanting pictures of me. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. You know, it's cute, whatever. Um, I do remember him saying that, but I, I, I can't imagine when he found the time, except for maybe the day I left. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of like, wow, how'd this happen? Did you think maybe this would lead to, to a marriage? Her answer to that just ahead. I also asked her about the extent of the sexual relationship she says they had, whether she was worried that this would all come out, and how the relationship ended, as well as this. If Melania Trump was watching this, what would you want her to know? Now more of my exclusive interview with former Playboy model Karen McDougal, who says for 10 months she had an affair with Donald Trump. She says it began in the summer of 2006. He was married and Melania Trump had recently given birth to their son Barron. McDougal says she felt guilty but tried to put all of that aside. Did you think maybe this would lead to, to a marriage? Maybe. That, that's something though you liked him enough, that's something you would have liked? Maybe. Did he, at the time, say, tell you that you were his only girlfriend? Or did that subject You know, happen? we never really discussed that. Um, I knew he talked to ladies, but I didn't know there was anything else. I didn't know he was intimate with other ladies. But I guess if he's, it makes sense, if he's, doing it behind his wife's back, why would he not do it behind my back? So. But at that time, in, in the frame of mind you were in then, you felt you were the only one. I thought I person. was the only one, yeah. I did. I thought I was the only one. Do you have any text messages, photographs, videos, anything 
that would dispute the, the Hope Hicks' statement that this never happened? Let me just say this. If you're in a loving relationship, do you try and collect evidence? That's not what you were thinking about. No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, the only thing that I have really is my journal that I keep. And like I said, I still do it to this day. It wasn't out to get anybody or, gosh, get anyone in trouble. But that, those are my notes. Those are for me. Um, no, when you care about somebody, you don't try and set them up in any way, shape, or form. That's my opinion. But I'm just wondering if, you know, some couples take a lot of pictures, put them on Instagram, or just take pictures for themselves. That wasn't something you two would do. Privately? Yeah. No, I... No, I didn't want anyone to find me in that compromising position, let alone him. But I, I guess at the time, I kind of thought more about myself. Like, I would never want anyone to see pictures of me like that. Mm. So it just so happens that I'm very protective of my image. <laughs> so I, I guess I protected him, too, without even knowing it. <laughs> Were you worried about people finding out? I was for I mean, a while. You your sister and, and others, yeah. but friends. I was for a while. In fact, there were a couple instances where we were out in public, and he had his hand on my back, and I kept thinking, I'm looking around, there's a lot of people. I'm like, how do these people, like, what are they thinking? I don't know what they're thinking, but I thought it was going to get out. So I was scared every time we went to an event. I thought, this is going to get out, and I didn't want it to get out. But at the same time, I felt so honored to be with him in a sense that I'm like, I don't care who knows, but I didn't want that reputation either. So it was kind of like the saying, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're saying you, you didn't want it to get out because? I mean, look at the bad things people are saying about me now. I didn't want that then, and I didn't want it for him either. I mean, this is a hard question to ask, and, but you, you said you had text that first time. All these times you saw him, this was an ongoing sexual relationship. Absolutely. Can you estimate how many times you actually saw him? Again, when you're in a relationship, do you count how many times you have sex? No. However, I can tell you we saw each other <clears throat> a minimum five times a month, um, up up to bigger numbers per month. So we over the course of how long? Over the, over the course of 2006. Um, through, I think I ended the relationship April 2007. So we were together 10 months before I chose to end it. So, so we saw each other quite frequently. So dozens of times you were together. Many dozens of times, And you yes. were intimate. Yes. Dozen, many dozens mm -hmm. of times. Um, this is another tough question. Um, and again, you don't have to answer it, but it's been raised with other people. Um, did he ever use protection? <clears throat> No. No, I didn't. Was that something you thought about or it didn't concern you at the time? You know, we talked about it um, right beforehand. He, he was starting to, and then he's like, I don't like these things. And, you know, we discussed things. Do you do blah, blah, blah. And we were just honest with each other, and uh, we, didn't, we didn't use any. Mm -mm. You, you talked about ending the relationship. Who, who ended the relationship? I did. Why? I was just feeling so guilty. It was just digging inside me. I think the excitement of it took over for a while. And I did care about the man. I, I'm not going to lie. So that made it hard to end it. But I think I just started feeling so bad about myself. Like, how could I do this to A, myself, but to B, to a family? Whether they get along or not, it's still a family. Um, I just needed to get out of it. I, I you know, I, I I just needed to get out of it. It just was tearing me apart in the long run. That's a hard thing to do to end a relationship, any relationship. It was very hard, but I knew I needed to get out. How did you end it? He wasn't in town, and I just simply said, look, this isn't working for me. And he's like, why not? And I told him, <laughs> I blamed it on my mom. I said, look, I know my mom knows about you, but she would be really, really, um, devastated if she found out we were actually having a relationship and being intimate together and you know the feelings and I don't want to disappoint my mom and he said a few words and that was about it but you know 
It is what it is. We ended it and we didn't talk for a long time again. We started talking again in 2009. Um, I went to the Miss on one of the pageants in Vegas with a girlfriend of mine. We weren't together, but we, we talked a lot. We went to his room and just chit-chatted. He invited you to the pageant? He did. He got us a room at the Trump Hotel in Vegas, a suite, really nice one. And you know, there were no intimate relations. I had a boyfriend at the time, so there was nothing like that at all. And then we stayed in contact for a little bit, and then we lost contact. Up next, I asked Karen McDougal about whether she ever thought about rekindling the relationship. I also asked her about what happened when Donald Trump announced his candidacy, how at first she says she didn't want her story to come out, and then something changed. Karen McDougal says she and Donald Trump had an affair for 10 months, an affair, she says, that began while he was married to Melania Trump and their son Barron was just a few months old. McDougal told me she felt guilty and that she was the one to end the relationship. Again, the White House has called allegations of an affair, quote, totally untrue. Ms. McDougal stands by her story. More now of our exclusive interview. Did you ever think about rekindling the relationship? Not while he's married, no. Yeah, of course I did. I had feelings for the guy, but not while I could. No, not while he was married. I, at that point in time, I, w I would never do that again. No. You didn't speak. I mean, you, you told friends as anybody would tell friends about a, a relationship. Sure. But you, you didn't at any point during this time, 2006, 2007, 2008, try to reach out or did you did you at any point after the relationship ended think about telling your story publicly, telling Never. about the relationship. 2007, 2008? No, in fact, I had media contacted me in 2011. I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out who, who would leak something like this. I mean, I'm asking all my friends. I even called him. I'm like, did you tell anybody? Like, are you leaking this information? He's like, no, don't worry about it. I didn't do it. So we didn't worry about it. But I actually had a manager at the time. Uh, I had this a couple um, journalists following me and they would not leave me alone. So I had an old manager at the time write them letters saying, you know, she did not have an affair, a uh, relationship, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So I denied everything. I didn't want it out. So you actually put out a denial to this? I did. In 2011? I did. Not, did they print that denial? I don't know, but I'm just saying my manager at the time emailed this one reporter that wouldn't give up. Uh, you guys are persistent. <laughs> um, she wouldn't give up. So he had to give her this letter and basically say, leave Karen alone at this point, like you're done, leave her alone, so. I mean, some people would have considered telling their story. That never crossed your mind. No. When you have a, when you have feelings in a relationship and you cared about somebody, why would you want to destroy their life any more than you might have already destroyed their life, so. At what point did, I mean, obviously Donald Trump announces for president, he's gonna run he gets the Republican nomination. At what point does this start to come back? Or this, this become suddenly in the forefront for you again? I was watching the Republican debate with a friend named Johnny. He's one of my good friends from many years ago. Um, he said, you know, the story is a big story. And I said, no way not going to happen. I go, you know where I stand on this, Johnny. I will never say anything. We dropped it. Your friend Johnny was saying this story, meaning the, your, the story of your relationship with Right. Of your, course. Your alleged relationship with Donald Trump. Right. And of course, Johnny's a Democrat, and I, but I'm a Republican. So. You're a Republican. I am. And I voted for Donald. Yes, I did. There you have it. Um, yes. Diehard Republican. Um, so we dropped it. But then later on, maybe a week or two later, an ex-friend or an old friend of mine started on social media talking about my relationship. And she was part of that. She, she knows everything. Um, she had starting, started putting it out there. So it was being seen. So I came to Johnny one day and I said, Johnny, look what she's doing. I said, do I need to worry about this? And he's like, absolutely you do. He said, you need to get ahead of the story now before everyone else takes your story and manipulates it any way they want to manipulate it and make it this very ugly thing. You need to control your story and you need to tell your truth. And I said, yes, you're right. So that's what we decided to do. And that's where Johnny one day comes, um, comes over and he's like, you know, uh, our mutual friend that we have um, found, found this guy named Keith and he's going to help you share your story. Keith Davidson. Yes, correct. An attorney. Yes, correct. 
an attorney who also was an attorney for Stormy Daniels. I didn't know that, yes. And others in, in this business. Clearly. <laughs> so what did, what did you do then? You contacted Davidson? I didn't, Johnny did. Johnny and the mutual friend contacted Davidson. Uh, within a matter of a couple of days, Keith came out and we all had lunch together and he wanted to know details. So we sat down at lunch for a couple hours, I gave him details and Keith was like, you know, this, this story is worth many, many millions. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So we, we, we talked about it and that's when Keith um, brought it to AMI. So did you know that Keith, your attorney, was going to go to AMI, which is the parent company which owns National Enquirer and other magazines? He said AMI. I didn't know what AMI was, to be honest. He said, AMI, we have this company that, you know, they'll, they'll probably want to hear your story. So. And what was the thought of selling the story in your mind? To get my truth out there. Um, I, I wasn't looking for money, clearly, but when he said it's worth many millions, I'm like, you know. That was something that was hard to pass up. Sure, of course. But if you fast forward, <laughs> I ended up not wanting to do that deal. So we were going to go to ABC and tell the story just to get the story out there. And for nothing, there was no pay. Did Keith have a meeting with AMI? Did you have a meeting with AMI? We did. We had a meeting with AMI. You told them your story. We told them the story. They actually didn't think um, it was very credible, even though off the record they said, Dylan, Dylan believes your story. But clearly when they came back, they said it wasn't believable. I'm like, Dylan believe being? Dylan Howard. He's uh, with AMI. Okay. Um, so they had like a 12-hour window to, I know I'm probably skipping around, I'm sorry. sorry. They had a 12-hour window to accept whether they wanted the story or not, and they didn't want the story. Did, at the time, had they off named a price of what they might be willing to pay? Or had Keith just said? Keith had just thrown out numbers, millions. yeah. Keith had just thrown out numbers. Mm -hmm. Many millions, not just millions, many millions. So when they turned it down, I said, okay, that's fine. But I, you know, I still have to get in front of the, the story because it's still getting put out there. So we went to ABC. They were very interested in the story. Uh, they knew everything. They know everything. And I just got cold feet. I said, I can't do this. You actually met with people from ABC News? Yes, we met with people from ABC News. Um, they were very interested in the story. Um, when it came down to it, I just got cold feet. I, I didn't want the story coming out of my mouth. I didn't want anyone to know what I had done. I didn't want anyone to know, you know, from his side what he had done. I wanted to keep it a very private matter because it was very private between us at the time. Did you still feel a sense of loyalty to Absolutely. Donald Trump? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, of course I did. I don't want to hurt him or anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then, then what happened? You decide not to go ahead with ABC. I decide not to go with ABC. I told them, you know, I got cold feet. I, my mother wouldn't be happy with me for sharing the story. Um, again, I always put my mom in the mix. But I just backed out. I just backed out. Well, then the Republican, he won the Republican nomination, and AMI was interested in the story again. Once Donald Trump won the Republican nomination, right, correct. you're saying AMI suddenly came back to you with interest well, in the story? Well, to Keith, yes, to us for the story, yeah. Why do you think it was that it was after Donald Trump was the Republican nominee that they came back? <laughs> They wanted to squash the story. You're saying they wanted to protect Donald Trump? I'm assuming so, yeah. But the offer, which we didn't discuss yet or haven't discussed, was, you know, they had offered me a big, you know, contract for, for work, for modeling and fitness and things like that. My, my life has always been health and fitness, so. They said they were going to have you be a columnist. You would write columns about health and fitness. Correct. They said I'd write columns. I would get... Uh, one, col uh, one article per month in OK Magazine, one article per month in Star Magazine for two years, and then four columns per month on Radar Online for two years. On top of that, two magazine covers, and their reasoning was like, you know, you've been a successful model, fitness, et cetera. Uh, we want to help you continue, and we actually want to rebrand you 
and you know you you know you're older now so we want to jump start into a new career for you and really get you out there to work and I'm like this is perfect like who doesn't what model wouldn't want that especially as an older model like mm -hmm. you're like oh this is great right um, so yeah but then the side deal was oh we're squashing the story okay it's a win-win for me like mm -hmm. I get the work and my story doesn't have to come out. Did you know that they were buying the life rights to your story? I did. I, I knew I could never talk about him. Sure. So that was, for you, this, this wasn't a non-disclosure agreement. To you, this was a, a great business opportunity. You're going to get paid. You're going to be able to have write columns. You're going to kind of launch a new aspect of your career. You're going to get the cover of some magazines. Uh, and on top of it, you're going to sell them your story, but they're not going to publish it, and therefore, correct. There's not going to be any ramifications correct. for the story getting out. Absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't want to get this work, and then that work could lead to other work or to other work? Who knows where it could lead? Of course, I was excited. So, in a, in essence, you were happy to have the story killed. Yeah, of course. Like I said, I never wanted to come forward. And you were going to get $150,000 for it, for having it killed and launching potentially a new career. Well, more importantly, I looked at it as I was doing work, the, the columns, the covers, and I'm getting paid for that. Oh, and my life story is like never has to be shared. It was more about the way it was presented. It was more about protecting me. It was more about we don't want to tarnish your image. We want to keep your brand wholesome and whole. So I'm like that's awesome. You know, that's great. So that's the way I perceive this contract. It was a win-win, like I said. Had you ever heard the term at that point, catch and kill? No, I had not. Mm -mm. Do you know what catch and kill is now? I do now. <laughs> yeah, I do now. What's your understanding of what catch and kill is? Catch us, from what I'm learning, a catch and kill is somebody for, like, say, for yourself, for example, taking a story about somebody you like or care about or have a friendship about and they squash a story so it doesn't hurt you. So or hurt them. the allegation, a AMI, which says they don't do catch and kill, uh, but a number of former employees of AMI have told the New Yorker that it's it, routinely they have done catch and kill. They have purchased the rights to a story, done sure. an interview, in your case, with you, get your story about Donald Trump, but then they never publish it. And right. they own the rights to it, and you can't tell it to anybody else. So the story is effectively killed as a favor to, in this case, Donald Trump. Right. Did you know that that's what was going, or, or that's the allegation of what was going on here. Did you, did you realize that at the time? I knew the story wasn't going to be printed. Yeah. Why do you think they squashed the story? Back then or now? No. Um, they, they, they didn't want to hurt him. You think it's because of a personal relationship with the guy who runs AMI, is friends with Donald Trump? Correct. Do you think, I mean, you wouldn't know this, but do you think Donald Trump would have been aware of, of, this, of this deal? That they were doing him, that they were allegedly doing him this favor? I wouldn't know, um, but based on what I'm learning, as we're all learning together as we read, and one of the big complaints with why I think my contract is illegal is because his attorney was talking to my attorney. So Michael, Co you're saying Donald Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, correct, was talking Speaking to with Keith Davidson, Keith, your Keith, attorney, um, without me even knowing, without my knowledge. Uh, I would assume that maybe he knew. I know his attorney did. I can't say that he knew, but his attorney. How do you know that Michael Cohen and your attorney, Keith Davidson, were in communication? I didn't know. I'm just learning this as you're learning this. Um, it's been reported, and my attorneys, they know. And to you, the idea that Michael Cohen would be in communication with your attorney at the time, theoretically, there would be no reason for Michael Cohen to be having communication with your attorney because this was a deal between Keith Davidson, you, and AMI. AMI. Right. So why was he involved in my deal? And why wasn't I told that he was involved in my deal? That's not fair and it's quite frankly illegal. The it's AM, wrong. How quickly was the AMI, AMI deal done? 
Once we agreed upon the jobs, the financial payment, things like that, um, it was done very quickly in a matter of a day or two. Basically, I was going out of town, and I said, I'll get back to you in a week. When I get back into town, they said, the deal really needs to be done now. I'm like, okay. So I think it was done within that night or the next day. How, do you remember what, what day this was or what, when this was in the presidential race? It was in August. I signed the deal August 6th, so it was probably August 5th or 4th that, I, that I, we you know, finalized and then signed on the 6th. But I can't tell you, I don't remember where the race was. So, so. this is in the last month or two yeah. of the presidential mm -hmm. race. Mm -hmm. Do you think the presidential race had anything to do with this deal getting done? When I'm looking back at it now, possibly, yeah. How so? Well, as an American citizen, we know that if you don't put all your evidence out, so to speak, that you know, or if you're paying to squash stories, or if you're given illegal campaign funds, we know it's illegal. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm learning. You all probably know this, but I'm learning this stuff. and. Would it have been potentially damaging if your story had come out in the last month or two of the presidential campaign? You know, I don't know how damaging it would have been. You've seen the other stories about him. It didn't hurt him. So could it have been damaging, politi politically speaking? Probably not. However, I think it could have damaged maybe family. I don't know. But. I mean, it depends on who you ask. It, it definitely could have damaged. I don't know. I mean, with that illegal campaign fund, I think that definitely would have damaged. But the the rumor of, you know, somebody's rumor or someone saying you had an affair or a relationship, does that really damage people? The 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 thought though of telling your story to AMI, some people hearing that are going to think a you wanted money and b you wanted to damage the president. I voted for the president. I voted for Donald. Why would I want to damage him? That's my party, Republican Party. That's my president. I did not want to damage him or hurt him in any way, shape, or form. But I also didn't want to put out the story because I didn't want my reputation to be damaged. I care about myself as much as I care about anyone else's reputation or personal life. Um, but like I said, I was more excited about this modeling contract, this, this big deal of writing for these magazines, and who knows where that could have went. You know, I love fitness, I love health, and that's where my focus was. Had, when you first went to AMI and Keith Davidson was telling you, oh, they're going to pay millions for your story, had they said, okay, yeah, we're going to run this story and we're going to pay you $2 million, would you have gone with that? Would you have done that? Probably not. Really? No. I mean, it's hard to say, but probably not. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but you also have your conscience. Um, like I said, I'm a different girl today. I've you know, return to my roots of my faith, spirituality. I'm going to church. I'm involved in ministry. Um, it's not where I'd want that to go, you know. If Donald Trump hadn't been running for president, do you believe this deal would have been made with AMI? Knowing what you know now. Probably not. No. Probably not. You're pretty conv you're convinced now this was an effort to do a favor for Donald Trump in the last few months of the presidential race. Unfortunately, yes. When you heard the Access Hollywood tape come out, just on a personal level, I'm wondering what you felt. You know what? I was disgusted. More of her answer to that question next. Also, she talks about the legal consequences she could face for speaking out and how she feels about that possibility when our exclusive conversation continues. Before the break, you heard Karen McDougal say she voted for Donald Trump. She voted for him despite all she says transpired between them. She voted for him having heard the Access Hollywood tape. I asked her about it during our conversation. When you heard the Access Hollywood tape come out, just on a personal level, I'm wondering what you felt. You know what? I was disgusted. I had not seen that in him at all, like when our relationship was going on. I didn't see that side of him at all. Like I said, he was very respectful. He was a gentleman. When we were out in public, I even had friends go, wow, he's really respectful to you when he's out in public. And, you know, his hand's always on your back or your shoulder, and, he, you know, he always introduces you. I didn't see that side of him until I started watching TV. And 
you know, that's not the man that I knew. So I was kind of disgusted on those comments. And I have brothers. I've heard my brothers say things, but that was pretty bad. It wasn't just locker room talk, as, as he said. No, I mean, I've heard my brother's locker room talk. And, you know, did he mean to say it? He said it. Would he really do it? I don't know. I've never seen that side of him. But And when you heard other women coming forward alleging inappropriate touching, inappropriate behavior, I'm wondering what you thought. Again, I was kind of mortified. I, I was like, wow, is he capable of that? Because I didn't see that. But clearly, you know, women have their stories and their opinions. And if they were violated like that, they, sh they should come forward. AMI has put out a statement saying uh, that you can talk to the media, that you're free. Yeah, I saw that statement too. But according to their attorney, I can't. There'll be financial ruin. They still own the life rights to your story. They do. They can transfer, according to the contract you signed, they can transfer those life rights to some other publication, correct? I don't recall that part, but okay. I'd have to see the, okay. it's been a while since I've read it. I understand that 10 months after the election, David Pecker uh, actually had lunch with you. What was the, the genesis of that? What was the point? I was told that David Pecker wanted to have lunch with me because he was um, happy about the way I answered my interview in one of the articles in magazines. Um, I don't remember which one, I'm sorry. Um, he wanted to thank me, and he wanted to thank me for my loyalty. Loyalty? Loyalty. He said loyalty is everything to him. Loyalty to, to AMI? Loyalty to... I thought to AMI. I don't know exactly what he meant by that, but I think it's probably maybe a combination of both. I don't know. Do you know what happens next with AMI? And I mean, you're now that you're speaking here? There could be a big lawsuit like against me. There could be financial ruin, but that's why I have really good attorneys to make sure that doesn't happen. Am I scared? Am I, do I feel threatened? Absolutely. But I feel I had to protect myself. I had to stand up for myself. And you know, I, I almost feel violated in the fact that I didn't know what was going, behind, going on behind the scenes. So I'm quite mad at that. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I feel taken advantage of in a sense. And I just want the right to be made. I want, I want it to be right. You filed the lawsuit, but you are speaking to us. So what is the point of the lawsuit? Why did I file a lawsuit? Yeah. I want my rights back. I mean, you want the, the rights, the life rights to your I want my back. life rights back. You know, it's, it's been, yeah, I want my life rights back. I feel like the contract is illegal. I feel like I wasn't presented correctly. I was lied to and everybody involved in this deal. Uh, I want the rights back and I want to share my truth because everyone else is talking about my truth, which they're, I need to share my story. Everyone else is talking about it. I've never talked. I, since the day it happened, I have refused to speak publicly privately even. I, my friends know, my family know, but nobody else knows. I wanted to keep it quiet, but now that it's out, I need to control it. I need to control it. Do you feel better having spoken? I do in a sense. I do because I'm actually standing up for myself now, and I really didn't do that before. And now people know my truth. I'm not a liar. I'm perceived as a liar or this and that, all these bad names. I did what I did. I'm not proud of it, and I feel terrible about it, but I'm a new woman, new creation, and I'm standing up for myself. When we come back, Karen McDougall's answer to this question. If Melania Trump was watching this, what would you want her to know? Karen McDougall says she was paid for the exclusive rights to her story by AMI. Her lawsuit alleges that the agreement was simply to spike the story. The practice, something the New Yorkers Ronan Farrow first reported, is known as catch and kill. Ms. McDougall is seeking to be released from the agreement, which of course raises questions about what more she may hope to gain from speaking out. You know, some people hearing that are going to say, look, you want, this is, you're in, in it for the money. They're going to say, okay, obviously we are not paying you for this interview, we don't right. pay for interviews, but you may go from here and <clears throat> write a book or make a movie or what, what, whatever it may be. To that you say what? Bottom line is this. I've offered to give back the 150, even though I only got 55% of that. 
I've offered to give back the 150 just to have my, my story rights back. The story is out there now. I'm not telling the nitty gritty details, as you can see. I'm very selective in what I'm, what I'm saying about our relationship. Um, I'm not out to make money on this. I'm out to get my rights back, to prove a contract was illegal, that I was taken advantage of, and then go back to my life, period. Did it anger you? I mean, is part of this because people at the White House have said, you're lying, you're not telling the truth? I don't, no one likes to be called a liar, but no, it's more about uh, the illegal portion of the contract and them not fulfilling what they promised me. They promised me this work. To date, there are only 10 articles in OK Magazine, 10 articles in Star Magazine, and maybe seven on Radar Online. Radar Online, I'm supposed to get four per month. I mean, the two years is up in August. I've gotten really nothing out of this. So you think that whole talk of helping you relaunch kind of a new a whole new phase of that your was career. fake. They didn't want to help me. I thought they wanted to keep my reputation clean from what they said. They wanted to rebrand me. They wanted to, you know, I'm an older model now. They wanted to make something a new start. You know, they promised me all these wonderful, beautiful things. Even when I met with David Pecker and Dylan and Keith in New York, after this is back last August, they offered me many more opportunities, but I haven't seen anything yet. Not that, that that's not part of the contract, but my point is they keep dangling the carrot. I'm not playing that game anymore. <laughs> um, are you aware of or have you spoken to any women with similar stories who have come forward? No, I haven't spoken to anyone. I know other, I've heard other stories from other people, but um, it's hearsay. It's not like the girl directly to me, but no, I can't comment on that. Would you have come forward publicly if, if Stormy Daniels hadn't come forward? Do you think that made an impact on you? I definitely think it made a little bit of an impact on me. It gives you more, um, it takes a little bit of the fear away. However, I probably would have just because as I'm learning about this contract and the people involved and the way I was treated and all the behind the scenes things that I wasn't aware about and all the work I'm not getting, which I contracted for, yeah, I probably would have come forward. If you didn't get what you were told in a contract work-wise, wouldn't you say something? Mm. Of course. Do you, have any, do you have any regrets about the relationship that you say you had with him? Back then? Yeah. The only regret I have about the relationship that I had with Donald was the fact that he was married. If he weren't married, I wouldn't have any regrets because he treated me very kind. He was very respectful, as I told you. It was a good relationship while it happened. Now, had I known at the time there were supposedly all these other women, no, I wouldn't have been in the relationship, but I didn't know that at the time. So, um, no, no regrets except the fact that he was married. If Melania Trump was watching this, what would you want her to know? Mm. It's a tough one. Um, or say to her. Yeah, what can you say except I'm sorry I'm sorry, um, I wouldn't want it done to me. I'm sorry.